Let's go to the Father in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you for this great Lord's Day. Father, the opportunity once again to remember the Sabbath by keeping it holy. Father, I pray for an anointing on everything that is said, spoken, uh, sung, prayed, and just the fellowship of God's people. Yes, we can encounter you throughout the week. But there's something special about worshiping with the fellowship of believers. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, good morning. Good to see you here this morning. And because it's a little cold, I, I tell you, we, we get the second half of the, of the people coming in after the announcement. So be sure and say something to them and let them know that we've got a lot of things going on here now, if you're visiting us for the first, second, or third time, or you've just ignored this card and you've been here 25 times, would you give us some kind of record of, of, of your being here with us? We, we love to, we value our, our guests, and we consider them a gift of God. We don't, we don't think you're here by accident. We believe you're here by God's providence, and we'd like to have a follow-up on that. So please fill this out. Put it in the offering plate, or even better yet, if you give it to the Welcome Center, they've got a free gift for you. And uh, by the way, just let me jump ahead of, uh, of the prayer time. Dan, you're looking good, buddy. Yes, sir. We give the praise and glory and honor to God. But thank you for being here. God bless you. I, I, let me just jump ahead. I got, I got a, p a picture of, of his uh, Wednesday, and some of you have seen this as well, of, of his tumor. Folks, it, it, it was before and after. It has shrunk to 10% of what it was. Praise God. All right, a few other things. Man, listen, today, last day to get your deacon's belt. Get it done. Today is the last day to bring in the Operation Christmas Child boxes. Well, if you haven't got it done now, you're probably not going to get it done. But if you have it, get it in. Also, uh, we are this week and the next week, we are taking up a Thanksgiving offering. We do that every year. This year, as it has in the past two years, it goes towards paying down the debt of, of the church, and that would help us. Folks, in a couple of days, we will be going below the $500,000 threshold of our building debt. So, uh, folks, it was just a few years ago, we were at a million dollars. So, praise God that we're getting that taken care of. And so, oh, yes, next Sunday, my goodness, be here at 9.30 for Sunday school. Be here at 10.30 for worship. We're having a special Thanksgiving Day worship. We do that every year. It's an hour and a half long, but it's worth it. Man, we've got all the music and, and Thanksgiving and praises and, and the, the, the worship music and a, a celebration of missions. And, and then, yeah, there's a sermon too. But, but then afterwards, we eat. It's going to be great. So we're excited about that opportunity. Be here. Bring friends. It's going to be a great Sunday. Now, we want to encourage you to stand up, look around, and welcome each other to worship today at Memorial Baptist Church.
All right, everyone, let's sing. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Here we go. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in man and fold with to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Long dear presence to cheer and Straight for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. For all you've done, I will thank you for all that you're going to do, for all that you promised and all that you are is all that has carried me through. So Jesus, I thank you. Oh, I thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving and setting me free. Thank you for giving 
waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. My soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Your grace abounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed, and you won't start now. I will call upon your name, and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans arise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters, wherever you may call me. And take me deeper than my feet could ever wonder, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me, and take me deeper than my feet would ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger. In the presence of my Savior, I will call upon your name. Keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are mine. You did not wait for me to cry out to you, but you let me hear your voice calling me. Now I am forever grateful to you. I am forever grateful for the cross. I am forever grateful to you. So you clothe yourself with frail humanity. And you did not wait for me to cry out to you, but you let me hear your voice calling me. And I'm forever grateful to you. I'm forever grateful for the cross.
great singing this morning. You may be seated. Our youth are going to come forward to collect tithes and offerings now. It is always such a wonderful day, one of my favorite days, when Trent Anthony, who grew up in this church, happens to be in town. Trent is the son of Mark and Susie Anthony, um, that most of you all know. Trent is uh, very active and sings every Sunday at his church in Wake Forest on the praise team. And I know what it's like, or actually I don't know, because I don't take many Sundays off around <laughs> here, but when you have a Sunday off, it's nice sometimes just to sit out there and worship. Um, so we're really excited. I'm really excited that Trent was willing to share a song today that he wrote. Um, this song is absolutely beautiful. The lyrics come from scripture, and I know that you'll be blessed by it. Steadfast at our side, we are not our own, 
We are His bride. We're bought by the blood of Christ. We're bought by the blood of Christ. Thank you, Trent. Always great to have you with us. This time as we go into a time of meditation and prayer, there's a, a few things I just want to mention to you. First of all, uh, uh, we don't have the, the rose up this week because we're waiting for the baby to come next week, but Mark and Ashley Geary were excited for their, the birth of their first child, Avery uh, Lene Geary. So we're very excited about that. And also be in prayer from uh, Mike Gertler. He has surgery this week as well. We'll go into a time of meditation and then prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the things that are small and great, in the times of victory, challenge, and at times difficulty, we are called by your name. And the ultimate victory is, is by your hand. And our success for eternity is guaranteed. Father, we thank you that in your eyes, our success is not in our productivity, it is in our faithfulness. It is our obedience to your spirit to praise God for what is before us and to give, give victory through our faith to things that are beyond our vision. Father, anoint this time as we open up the word of God and be a glory and honor and praise to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, our youth minister, Eric Ross, will be giving the children's ministry. So children, and if you need some help with grandparents or parents, come on down. He's meeting right over this side, right over here. Come on forward. So I figure I can just use this mic since it's already out. So thank you, Trent. That was really a great song. So... All right, I'm trying to figure out which way I should walk. I'll walk this way. Oh, maybe the cord's not going to be long enough, but that's okay. So take a seat. Today we are talking about remembering the Sabbath. Okay, sorry. I had to look up. I'm just kidding. I, I, I did prepare. I'm ready for you guys. So you guys have all heard about the Ten Commandments, right? You guys know all about them. You guys can name them all right up top of the, your head right now, right? You guys can do that? Yes, you just say yes. You don't have to do it. I'm not going to ask you to do it. So. You can just say yes. But today, the specific one that we're talking about uh, is remembering the Sabbath. Uh, and so that's kind of like a, a church kind of term, but basically what it means is uh, remembering a day uh, for rest and having rest. And so a lot of the times we kind of think of rest as just kind of sleeping, like that's kind of how I always like, you just take rest as just sleeping, like taking naps and stuff. Do you have a question? You're jumping ahead, but that's exactly right. So kind of like God rested on the, the seventh day, but we kind of think of, of resting as like naps. And so uh, for me, I am the nap master. My wife will tell you, like, I have mastered the nap. Like, it doesn't matter what's going on. I can take a nap. I can sleep anywhere. Like, I have mastered that. I got it from my dad because no matter what, he would just kind of get home, turn on the TV, and just crash, just sleep. So I got that from my dad. I learned it from him. He was a nap master as well, so I got that, inherited that trait. And so we kind of think of resting as just kind of taking a nap or falling asleep. But in reality, God didn't need to, to, to rest or to sleep after his work. He worked six days creating everything, and then he rested. Um, and he did that to kind of show us an example that we work, we work, we work, but we need to take time out of our weeks to 
to refocus on God and to take that time away from work, where God's a part of our work, a part of everything, but we take that time away from work to refocus on God. And sometimes that's taking naps because that's what I do. I usually take a nap when I take my day off. But we need to remember to take that rest, to take that time away from everything else and refocus on God because that's the example that God set. He didn't need to rest, but he wanted to set that example. So as I followed my dad in becoming a nap master, we need to follow God in remembering to rest after our work as well, to refocus our lives to God. So let me pray for you guys real quick, and I'll let you guys go sit down. Heavenly Father, I uh, thank you so much for this opportunity just to, to, to preach your word a little bit and just to pour into their, uh, their lives. I pray that you just help us to uh, remember the Sabbath, to remember to take a day out of our week to rest and just to follow your example, God. Uh, I pray that you just help us through it in your son's name. Amen. All right. Thank you, Eric. I'm just curious. While the children are sitting down, how many nap masters do I have in this audience here? All right. All right. Well, I, I have to confess. Oh, is that right? I don't wait till, till just Sunday to take a nap either. I, I do it regular throughout the week. It, it, Ronald Reagan ran the government off of taking naps. So uh, that's, that's what I've heard. So it's good enough for him, good enough for me. Uh, let's take a look this morning as we're looking at the fourth commandment. And uh, let's bring up the, the, the scripture. Would you read this with me up here? Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any... And yeah, there you go. Uh, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Well, th there it is. It, it's, it's straightforward, and, and it not only tells us what to do, but it, but it gives us instructions, specific. Eh. All right, let's, you really need to pray for your pastor this morning. He cannot talk. Specific. Yeah, it tells us the details, all right? The details, and it, it gives us the reason why. So why is the fourth commandment is so controversial? And folks, it is a controversial commandment. Now, years ago, when I was growing up, and, and throughout most of history, part of the controversy on the Sabbath is, which day do we do it on? And and, and even today, we have groups like the Seventh-day Adventists and the Seventh-day Baptists and other groups that say the Sabbath is on Saturday. And, and, and if you look at the Jewish law, technically, they are correct. But even from the very first century, what day the Sabbath day became controversial. You see, the reason why we do it, or most of Christianity does it on Sunday, is because early on, it didn't take long before we got on the wrong side of the Jewish faith because, you know, the first Baptist church was in Jerusalem. It wasn't really a Baptist church, but it was run very closely. That's another sermon. But anyway, so, so we already started having problems in the synagogues where most of the churches started. And, and because of, of that, and, and because Jesus Christ was, was risen on Sunday, those two factors, because we did not want to be identified necessarily as Jews, and because of Jesus' resurrection, we have historically chosen to do it on Sunday. Now, Seventh-day Adventists, God bless them. They worship God in, in spirit and in truth. They're worshiping correctly. We worship on Sunday. God bless us. If we worship in spirit and in truth, God bless us. So it, it, even though that's still a controversy with people that like to get technical legalistic, today it's that's less of a controversy, and it's more of a controversy of, should we even do it? I mean, and I hate to sound like an old guy, but, but a lot of us remember the time when, when if a civic activity happened on the weekend, they did it on Saturday. When is it now? Typically, it's done on 
Sundays. You would never have a youth event, unless it was a church event, on a Sunday. And now it's, it's more often than Saturdays. I mean, I know of people, great, godly, faithful people that aren't here this morning because they're at a basketball or, or some other sporting event. And, and they used to be really crossing the line with us, and it's just not anymore. And I can tell you from talking to pastors from California to pastors just right up the street, they will tell you that, that there was a time when, when if you considered yourself active at a church, you were there four Sundays a month. Now people consider themselves very active if they're there one time a month. If I have time, if I'm not doing anything else, I'll come to church. And so we've moved into a time in our culture where, man, Sabbath is kind of a, as far as worshiping God, it's kind of an optional activity. And, and folks, that's never God's intention for us. And, and, and folks, listen, I, I'm not trying to get legalistic on this, and I'm, I'm not trying to get condemning or, 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 or saying that you're crossing the line, do this, don't do that, that type of thing. I mean, that's, that's what happened during the time of Jesus when they, when they got really fine detail about what you could and couldn't do on, on the Sabbath. And Jesus says in Mark 2.27, He says, Sabbath is made for the man, not man for the Sabbath. See, there's an intent for why God tells us, commands us, to honor the Sabbath by keeping it holy. But with that intent, because you are created in love, and, and, and because God fosters that love relationship with you, God desires that love relationship with you, your, God's will for you for eternity is to be in even a deeper love intimacy with Him. There's a love reason why that. And I know I don't have a lot of time, but I'll, I'll go through these just real briefly. First of all, we'll break that down. Verse 8, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. God's intent is the day is to be holy. The, the definition of, the simple definition of holiness is, is set apart for God's purposes. This day, Sunday, whether you, whether you have your Sabbath on Saturday or whether you have it on Sunday, that day is set aside for God's purposes. God says that you are holy. You are set aside for His purposes. And there, therefore, it's important that we, we bring the time of holiness and the people of holiness together for his purposes to be set aside and here's his love intent the love intent is and i've already tent, already uh, alluded to this that you are his first peter says be holy because i am holy and all peter is doing is he's referring to a scripture out of leviticus that says essentially the same thing you are holy because I am holy. You are set aside for relationship with Him. You are God's possession. Now, He created you, and, and, and He could have forced that possessiveness on you, but real love is chosen love. And so He, he stands before us and says, choose me. You, you can reject me and... and <laughs> drift on down to the consequences of what I have for the rest of my, my, my uh, creation that has rejected me. But, but please choose me. You are created because I love you. And I, you are my possession if you choose to surrender yourself to me. See, that's why when we become Christians, it, it, it's not a religious choice that we make. We sign over everything about ourselves, or at least we're supposed to, everything about ourselves to Him. We surrender to Him. We become His possession. Sabbath reminds us of that. I know that you have it intellectually, but in practice, practice 
you have to go back to a reputa reputation. Repetition. I told you I'm having trouble speaking today. Once a week, once every seven days, helps put you back to a touchstone that you are his, set aside for his holiness. Verse 9. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. God's intent is that you get more work done in six days than in seven days. Well, pastor, that makes no sense at all. It seems to me that if you, get, you do one more day of the week, one seventh more, you ought to be 14% more productive. See, you didn't think I could do math. 14.5. Anyway, but, uh, but that you be more productive. But the thing is, folks, God did not design us to be running all the time. You see, this is a, even though we, we see in Genesis that God rested on the seventh day, we have no biblical record that the patriarchs or during the time of the 400 years slavery that they took a day off. See, can you imagine that 400 years of being used for somebody else's labor? And just one day after another, after another, and after a while, folks, you don't have to be 75 to be ground down by working constantly. At any age of your life, you need some time of rest. And so God was saying, you, I am honoring you. You are, my intent is that, 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 that you have a time to, to rebuild yourself, that you have a time to, to think about me, that, that you, you take yourself from, from manual work and, and you give yourself some creative time, some, some time to be still before me and, and, and let that creativity, that recreativity that I have placed in your life with intention, that you, that you give it that opportunity. Now, see, a lot of what I do is creativity. A lot of what I do is, is what a lot of people would like to do that, that, that do manual labor. And, and I'll tell you, on my Sabbath, instead of reading books and that type of thing, I go out and I, I do more manual stuff because it's, I need to free up my mind. And, and don't, a lot of times the only way I can do that is, is through doing physical stuff if I'm not already wore out. But the thing is, we, we, we need a break from what we're doing. God intended us to be that way. And his love relationship is, he's saying, you are worth more than your work. Think about that. Now, if that's not a love statement in this day of productivity, I don't know what is. We, at our work, even if you work at the church, you're kind of love for your productivity. All right, if things are going in the plus problem, a plus plus area, you're, you're doing pretty good. I mean, they'll forgive a lot of mistakes if things are being productivity. And God is saying, it's not about your productivity. It's anything that you could do, anything that you could offer me, I could get it done by somebody else or in somebody some other way. What God values about you is your faithfulness. See, faithfulness, is, it's not based on productivity. It's based on, uh, it's based on dedication and it's de based on devotion. That's what God values about you. And, and even though it may sound a little bit legalistic to you, Him saying, take a day off and think about me. Take a day off and, and, and come and worship with me just, just for a couple of hours. Come, come and take a day off and, and, and sing praises and worship. Take a day off and, and meet with God's people. Do that because I desire not your productivity. I desire your faithfulness. Next verse. On it, you shall not do any work, neither you nor your sons or daughters, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. God's intent is that you are responsible for your household. Now, at, at the time of this, and, and really throughout most of history, if you were a man, married, family, you were responsible for your household. Not just your wife and your children, 
You were responsible for your in-laws living with you. You were responsible for guests. You were responsible, in this case, for foreigners. You were responsible for your animals. And let me tell you, it's pretty much the same, same concept to this day. And, and God was honoring labor and honoring health by saying, you need to take a day off. Even your animals need to take some time off. Because anybody that's worked with animals know that if you work an animal seven days a week without a break, you're going to drive them to an early grave, just like you will with a human being. And so that's why it's important for you, to, for you and your household to take time off. And for you as the head of your household, men, you may be thinking I'm, I'm being archaic, but I'm not, men. And if men have abdicated, mothers, you set the example. People are, are looking up to you in your family. God's love on this is that you are a generational blessing. The Old Testament talks many times about how being obedient to God is a blessing to the third and fourth generation. Disobedience to God is a curse to the third and fourth generation. Folks, <laughs> the older I get, the more that I see that is true. The more that I know grandparents and parents and grandchildren and even great-grandchildren within congregations and, and, and see how that plays out, the more that I understand my own family history, the more that I see and understand that, yes, you can break the mold, but usually you don't. And so let me ask you something. As you claim to be obedient to God, are you being a generational blessing or are you being a generational curse to your family? Obedience to God makes the difference. And remember, God's calling us to us. It's not productivity, it's faithfulness. He seeks for us to be faithful in, by honoring the Sabbath, by keeping it holy. And next, it says, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath, and made it holy. God's intent is God has set the example. Before we, we talked about, about, about the father or, or, or the parent setting the example, but God has headship even over that. And within that, God at creation itself has set the example. Do you think God gets tired? I don't think so. I, I think God doesn't run out of energy. I don't think God runs out of creativity. But even at the, the, the essence of creation, he took time off. He didn't do that because he had to. He took that because it was an example to you. He has headship over us, and therefore he is not asking us to do anything that he hasn't done himself. God himself sets the example for keeping the Sabbath holy. God's love intent for us is that you live intimately in his fellowship. Folks, it is all about the relationship, not hardline legalism. It is about the fact that, that in any relationship, when you don't spend time with somebody, you drift. If I don't speak to my wife for three weeks, there's a hard drifting going on, and she's going she's gonna to draw the line on me real quick. Actually, it'll happen in two days, not in three weeks. Because how do you spell love? It's an old saying. You spell L-O-V-E-T-I-M-E. -E. It's in, in relationship that you have, especially God's relationship. And yes, I know that you can spend time with God in personal devotion time. Yes, I know that we're supposed to be in an open state of prayer with God. All of that's important. Come Wednesday night, it's great, it's wonderful, but there's nothing like the Sabbath. God has set it aside for God's people. Ever since we've been a Christian church, I'm not talking just memorial, I'm talking Christendom all the time back to Jesus, whether it's Saturday or Sunday, God has called his people 
to pull together because there's something that happens when God's people come together and worship in His name. There's a special presence that happens when we come together and worship in His name. It's because it's, it's a foretaste of your eternity. This life that you have, it's, it's going to be a speck of time compared to what's coming in the future, God's eternal kingdom, where it's going to be, whether there's a day or night, all the time it is going to be, and I can't hardly describe it, but just trust me, it's going to be God's people together in full intimacy with God as He has always intended. This keeping the Sabbath and by keeping it holy, remembering it, it's a foretaste of our eternity and what God has in store for us. Let me pray for you. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. So many things to say about your intent for the Sabbath and the fact that it comes out of a deep place of love for your people and for us individually. Father, stir in us a desire to be with God's people, to honor you, to, to set the day aside for obedience in remembering your purposes. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. How is God speaking to you this morning? We're going to have a time of invitation. Hymn number 499, open the eyes, Lord. Hymn number 499, you are invited to respond to how God is speaking to you this morning. Please rise. coming to worship today. Uh, most people don't feel comfortable coming down for during an invitation time. In fact, I handle most decisions out in the foyer in my office. So if God has spoken to you, there's something like that you need to speak to me about, I'll be available in the foyer in my office. Eric, would you close us in prayer? Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for this place that we have just to come and worship your name, to fellowship together, and just to hear your truth, God. I pray that it is a truth that sticks with our hearts and our minds that we can live out uh, each week, God. I pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen.